Relapse. That's what I got. Um, 2017, nodul nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, remission for two years. After ARCHOP, chemotherapy for six cycles. During every uh, three months, it was a checkup, blood tests, doctors feel your neck and all that. And uh, yes, um, this year during COVID, I wasn't allowed to go to the doctors or to the specialist. And um, I felt a bit of a sore throat. And yeah, every year I get a sore throat. So I didn't think much of it. And uh, I started to get a bit of a swelling. So I had a, this is a second biopsy. Uh, when I did the, um, when I had the nodular lymphocyte, we did a, a biopsy and I ended up with a bit of a swelling around the neck. You can, you can see, and that's from the removal of a lymph node back in 2017. I noticed that was swelling up. This is a removal lymph node last week um, and the story goes is the first thing they'll do to you is they'll get a core sample which means they'll put a needle aspiration in your neck using ultrasound they'll pinpoint the uh, lymph node and they'll pick a little sample out and I'll do that maybe three or five times like five times I've passed out I was under local um, so if you're weak if you suffer from vasovagal syndrome that might be a, an issue but talk to your doctor um, so this is the big one, this is the last week's one, and that confirmed, after we did the core biopsies, we did a lymph node removal, and that confirmed what I have now is uh, T-cell lymphocyte-rich large diffuse B-cell lymphoma. So it's a transition, it's a change. Remember, nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma is a non uh, a nodule or slow growing, I can't remember the words, or chemo brain already because I'm on chemo. Um, no, I can't remember the word. Anyways, but the T cell rich, hepatocyte rich, sorry, T cell hepatocyte rich is a variation uh, of that. And there's, they've shown that there's a most, will, and it's a rare form again. Most will transition to that. And they treat it like a normal B cell, uh, normal D cell, large, large diffused B sorry, get all muddled up in the brain, uh, large diff cell, B cell lymphoma, whatever it is. Anyway, look it up. <laughs> you can see I'm happy. Um, I'm not freaking out. Why? When I had my first diagnosis, it was the end of my life. It was, will I see my kids grow up? Will I see my kids get married? Will I see grandchildren? Will I achieve things? Will I do this? In two years, I did so much. And you know what? One of the great words or sayings that I heard from a motiva motivational speaker called Gary Vee or Vaynerchuk, someone walked up to him and said, Gary, give us three words of inspiration in my business. He turns around and says, you're going to die. And hey, that's motivation for you. So think of it as an opportunity. I'm looking, this is an opportunity at the moment. I came in yesterday. It's taken about six weeks or more, maybe eight weeks. I think I knew in August, and now it's uh, Halloween. <laughs> um, not seeing the ghost yet, but um, yeah, I'm pretty upbeat because what I've come to understand is that the treatments have come a long way. What you read on the internet, take with a grain of salt, what your friends come up to you and say to you, I found this treatment, it's experimental. Take it with a grain of salt. The science, the medical science has advanced so much. Even now my doctor's saying to me, I want to put you on TCAP uh, therapy, which is training up your stem cells to fight the specific cancer you have. Not available at the moment for all, but maybe two, three, five years. Trick is, knock it back into remission. Stay healthy, work hard. Don't let it be in the way. It, won't, it shouldn't stop you. It should motivate you. And once you get that motivation, you progress. So don't fear. Act. Live it. And you'll find it at the end of the road. The, tow, the road. You think you're falling down a dark tunnel, but there's light at the bottom. I know it's a bit 
<laughs> back to front, you're not dying. There is also always something out there. Of course, if you have underlying issues, heart problems, existing diabetes, issues with your, with, you know, other things, I don't know. I mean, I've got diverticulitis as well. And I've got another issue with the stomach. These things will flare up. They complicate things, and that's where the issues become a, a, real, a problem. If you keep the lymphoma in check, that's one less thing to worry about. I know the treatment's hard. I'm now doing a rituximab dhac treatment uh, all day yesterday, 12 hours of infusion. Today I got another three hour infusion and an, an injection to thin my blood. And um, yeah, look, it's, I'm in hospital. There's the uh, drip. They want the, me to put a, a Hickman's pick, a, a line in my arm. I'm like, that's going to remind me. See, psychologically, I'm a bit screwed too. Um, I hate needles. I can't stand them. But I'd rather have this and go home with a pick line and be reminded that I have to go back to hospital. So that's how I play games to stay positive and motivated because I don't want to be reminded that I'm sick. I'm only reminded when I'm sick when I can't do things. So I know that at this moment, after day one of treatment with 12 hours of drugs being pumped through into my system, and I'll weed at least eight times a day yesterday with dragging this pump with me to the toilet each time. God, can you imagine how you do it in the old days? We had a little bottle of pee. Um, but uh, yeah, that's um, <laughs> an experience to walk out, walk around with your pump. Um, you really look sick. Um, but I'm pretty happy. I'm hungry. Just craving for meat at the moment and steaks and trying to keep off the carbs. I'm going to try and keep off the processed food because that's a no-no. Salt is just a bad thing for cancer. Um, but yeah, eat healthy, you know, eat clean, um, whole foods. Um, I, uh, I do a lot of cooking at home. I, I've got a YouTube and a, uh, Instagram, Facebook channel as well where I do a lot of cooking show my cooks off. So I'm like um, a carnivore heart. I'll probably attribute that to a lot of my um, recovery to a high meat diet, um, mainly because there's a lot of the blood, red blood cells that I gain from eating meat and the trace elements and the minerals. Um, I find I recover a lot, a lot quicker. Uh, you can see I still got energy. It's because before I came in, I had a massive steak fest at home the day before, the night before. I'm running out of breath because it could be that the drugs are kicking in and it's doing its work. These drugs are killing off any new dividing cells. It's cancer. It could be your lung tissue. It could be your heart tissue. Yes, you will deteriorate. In fact, this is a, the downhill slide for five or six days, maybe seven days. I'll probably get, at this time next week, the slump. And the slump means I'll probably couldn't be bothered. <laughs> More looking a bit puffy around the face, um, and my neck swelling is still roughly there. I've got a lovely scar that's going to heal quite uh, nicely. The last one I had was a little bit further up that healed. You can't see it. Um, other things that you've got to be concerned about is the other cancers that can pop up. I had a basal cell on my back, so skin cancer is now an issue for me. Um, I do have some problems where pre, pre gastral cancers can occur. Um, and that's more to do with uh, the hectobacteria that I had in my system. Hello, bacteria, I can't pronounce it. You do a blow test and you take some antibiotics, heavy antibiotics, and it kills this bacteria, but it's eating away. And they say pre-cancer. Divicuturalitis can be dangerous as well if they get infected. So, you know, infections, temperatures, fevers, you've got to run. Anything over 38, if you get to 38, you're at the hospital because this thing can be quite quick. And the DHAC treatment I'm doing is quite heavy, it's quite strong. Um, so they do, at least for the first infusion, they put you in hospital uh, to watch, monitor. They take blood tests. Uh, painful thing is they come every four hours to measure your, your heart, to check your heart and check your temperatures. So they wake you up at 4 a.m. and and again, at 6 a.m., whatever it is, 8 a.m., I don't know. So, oh, you don't sleep. <laughs> but that's good. You're being watched, making sure that your immune system is doing what it's supposed to be doing. 
and that um, that your immune system does, you know, recover well, as well as what well, that's what they're looking for. Um, so apart from that, I'm in good spirits. This is the first infusion. I have another two more to do. Then I'll have a stem cell transplant, which will be interesting. Where they put one in one one uh, cannula in one arm, the other cannula in the other arm, and they siphon the blood out. They pull out the stem cells, and they uh, reuse those stem cells as a transfusion later on. To so the idea is that you once you do your chemo, you clean of all your um, nasty cells that are causing the problem and they put back the good cells that are produced without that fault which is the over multiplying and not destroying itself which is where you end up with a malignant cancer that grows and grows and, and it penetrates other organs and blood vessels and can end up in all sorts of parts of your body which you probably most likely die from uh, organ failure or infection that you can't fight so um, lymphoma kills that way if you don't treat it and I just don't believe why people wouldn't want to do chemotherapy when the chances of living without the chemotherapy is a lot lower um, your body's not really going to kill off all those lymphocytes or it's a it's a factory fault and it could be underlying uh, immune issues that you have in my case I don't know maybe it's because I had hay fever I remember my tonsils at seven um, so my lymph system was already compromised at a young age and always suffered from sore throats and maybe that's a complication we don't know but um, a few people said the same thing they, one guy told me he had a car accident hurt his back and it, in fact, and it caused a problem in his stomach 